Yo, what's going on everybody? This is Rocket here. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to make your very own CS2 animations inside of Blender. In my previous video, I taught you how to make CS2 animations using HLAE and Source 2 Filmmaker. And I got a lot of comments of people asking whether they could do similar things in Blender. So I'll show you how to do that in this video. I'm going to cover how to import maps from CS2 into Blender, as well as character models and animations and weapon models as well. And then how to combine all three together and create your own animation at the end. If you guys have any other ideas for future video ideas following on from this or maybe something completely different let me know in the comment section and i'll be sure to make it as well as slap a like on the video and subscribe if you find this video helpful at all and uh, without any further ado let's get into the video so for this video you're obviously going to need an install of blender if you don't have blender already head over to blender.org or you can download it recently blender 4.0 came out however i'm not going to be using that in this video as i'm not sure if the add-on we're going to use uh, supports blender 4.0 you're welcome to test it but but i'm going to be using blender 3.6 lts so if you code to download and then go blender lts and you'll see here blender 3.6 lts which stands for long-term support and then if you scroll down you can go ahead and grab whichever version you need for your operating system here and install it as long as you have blender 3.4 and above it should work for this tutorial and once you downloaded and open blender we're going to need to install the add-on that we're going to use in this video and that add-on is called source io you'll see it here on github i'll leave a link down in the description to where you can go and download it if we come over to the releases section you'll see version 5.2 initial cs2 support and then you're going to want to come down here and you'll see source io.zip and just click on that to download it you can download whichever the latest version is as currently this only has initial cs2 support as it says so i expect that the support for the models and textures and things like that will get better over time so go ahead and grab the latest version just want to say a big thank you to red eye and the other contributors for making this software available like i said the link to the github will be down in the description they also have a discord linked here so if you need any help i'd recommend going over there as i can only really provide sort of basic support and and then once you've downloaded that zip, just come up to edit, preferences, add-ons, install, navigate to your downloads folder, find the source.io.zip and then click install add-on. I've already installed it as you can see here and then just make sure that you tick this to enable it. And then to check it's been enabled properly, if you come up to file import, you should see here source engine assets and you should have this menu if the plugin is installed correctly. And the final thing you're going to need, which I hope is quite obvious, is CS2 installed on your computer because we're going to need it to grab the textures, models and maps and things from the game files to import into blender using that add-on if you guys would like me to make a pack sort of like i did for valorant models then do let me know and i can you know create a pack that you can just download then you don't have to worry about importing anything like that but obviously that'll take me some time so if there's enough demand for it then maybe i'll do it but for this tutorial i'm going to teach you how to import the models yourself so once you've done all of that we'll first start by importing our maps so so inside blender tap a on your keyboard and then press the delete key to delete all of the default objects as we don't need any of those and then come up to file import source engine assets and you're going to scroll down to where you see source to packed map and click on that now what you're going to need to do is find where your cs2 is installed so currently at the time i'm making this video it's still called counter-strike global offensive in the game files i don't know if that's subject to change in the future but at the moment that's what it's called so mine is installed on my d drive under steam library steam maps common and you'll see counter-strike global offensive yours may be in program files x86 or wherever you put your steam installs basically so go ahead and find that if you can't find it inside steam if you right click on cs to go properties and then installed files and browse it will show you where you've installed it so as you can see here and then you're going to go into the cs folder into game into csgo into maps and you'll see here we have all of our maps so i've tried this with every map and it's worked flawlessly except for inferno i'm not sure why but it throws an error when you try and import inferno I haven't tested the vanity map so you could give that a go but essentially you can import whichever map here you like i'd probably just go for the standard maps instead of the vanity or prefab maps i'm not sure what the purpose of those were if they were used in development or for testing or whatever but they're just smaller sections of the original maps so you're probably going to want to just you know import the entire thing so for this tutorial let's just go with nuke so de underscore nuke dot vpk and then click on import and now if we use our scroll wheel to zoom in and out and hold it down to pan around you can see we've added all of these empties into our scene so what a lot of these are are lights and soundscapes essentially just different areas of the maps you know where the dynamic lighting is coming from uh, and what you'll be able to hear in these certain zones as well as various other markers whether they therefore you know the bot ai or 
information triggers or whatever they are. But all we need to do now, obviously, is import our entities, meshes, models, you know, whatever to create the map, basically. So in the top right corner, in the outliner, you'll see we've got all of these nodes here. And essentially what all of these are, are representations for what will become entities when we import them. So let's just start by collapsing this collection. See static props, 748 of those, which is going to be our map. For animations and things, we don't need to worry about environments, soundscapes, or anything like that, as well as info points, areas for bomb sites and buy zones, as well as any logic and pass props, anything like that. Lights you can keep if you want to, if you think they're, you know, suitable for your animation. So maybe in Nuke, on the, in the inside, you may want to keep the lights. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to get rid of all of them. And then we've got some post, looks like a post-processing volume down here. So let's just click on that and hold shift, go all the way up to environment, select them all, right click and hit delete hierarchy. And now it looks like we've got nothing left, but we do still have all of our static props, which is basically the only bit that we're interested in. So the way we import the maps using this add-on is we, if we select one of these, you can see we've got concrete floor and we click this arrow here. You can also press N on your keyboard to open the menu, go to source IO. This you'll see we are in the entity loader. So essentially we can load in the entity for this node. What I suggest you do is select one, scroll down a bit, hold shift, select another one. I probably, depending on how good your PC is, I'd probably do them in sort of batches of 100 or so. I have a pretty good PC, so I'm just going to do them all in one. If Blender crashes when you're doing this, just reduce the amount that you select at a time uh, and just do them in smaller batches. You can see there's a total of 748 entities. I'm going to uncheck use instances and leave replace entities on. And you'll also see the setting here, use BVLG, which I believe stands for Blender Vertex Lit Generic. I don't really understand what this is, nor do I care enough to actually look into it. I've tested exporting the map with and without it, and I didn't really notice much of a difference. So for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to leave it on. And now I'm going to click load entity. Now, as you can see, the map has been successfully imported. If you hold down the middle mouse wheel, we can pan around and scroll in and out to zoom in and out. Now we just want to check to make sure that all of the textures and materials have imported properly. So in the top right corner, if we swap over to the material view, again, this may take another minute or so while it loads in all of the textures. And as you can see, it looks like we've pretty much got everything imported successfully. So now we have a nuke inside of Blender. One thing I like to do is you'll see that inside Blender, we have this sort of grid to show where the ground is. And you can see it's way up in the air uh, on this map. So what I like to do is just align them. It just makes it a bit easier to see. So you haven't got this grid sort of clipping uh, in through the middle of your models when you're trying to make your animation and stuff. So in order to fix that, just press A on your keyboard to select every single uh, object. And now if we find an area of the floor, so sort of here, and we press G on our keyboard to move the map. So you can see now if we press G, if we move our mouse around, it moves the whole map. Uh, so G and then press Z to move on the Z axis. And if we move our mouse up, you'll see it will just stay on this one axis and we can line it up with the floor just like that and now if I click to set the position you'll see now we've got the grid is nicely aligned with the floor on the map now all we have left to do is we come over to the outliner scroll all the way to the top and delete this spare uh, collection there and you'll see we've got everything inside of our DE nuke collections let's get rid of these other collections we don't need those and we'll just rename this to nuke map or something so that we know uh, what it is and that it's been pre-processed by us and ready to use in an animation. So let's save this and we'll come back to this later when we're going to add our characters and weapon models. So let's go up to file, clean up, remove all the unused data blocks and the recursive ones as well. And then under external data, automatically pack resources. Like it says, there haven't been any new files that are packed. That's because essentially all these models are being linked directly from the CSGO game files rather than being imported into Blender and made copies of. But that's fine. It's just good practice to uh, pack external data anyway. And then let's click save as. And then I'm going to create a new folder called maps and we'll just save it in here as uh, nuke.blend and save. Now, just before we move on to character models, I'm assuming if you're making an animation like this, you'll be using it in a montage or edit of some kind to post here on YouTube. And one of the hardest things I find when making an edit like this is finding great music that won't give you a copyright strike. Luckily, that is no longer a problem thanks to this video sponsor, Licked.
Licked is the ultimate solution to supercharge your YouTube videos with mainstream music. With a vast music library boasting over 1.3 million mainstream songs, Licked has got you covered no matter the content you make. Now you can legally license and download tracks from some of the world's biggest artists. As YouTubers, we know the YouTube algorithm rewards longer watch times and what better way to keep your audience hooked than with some awesome, recognisable music. But don't just take my word for it, boost your engagement like some of the top YouTubers like The Sidemen, Mr Beast and Logan Paul who are already using Lick. If you don't download and license your music legally, you're playing a risky game with YouTube's content ID system and trust me, you don't want to get your video flagged. This can lead to demonetization, limited reach, region bans or even a copyright strike on your channel. But with Licked, you no longer have to worry. Licked is the must-have tool in your creative toolbox, so why wait any longer? It's time to take your content to the next level. Licked is offering an exclusive 50% discount off your first mainstream track purchase along with a free 14-day access to their extensive stock music collection. That's right, a 50% discount and free access for 14 days. So grab this opportunity and check out Licked with the link at the top of the video's description and elevate your content today. And for character models, what we're going to need is this piece of software called source to viewer Go ahead and download it here or over on the GitHub page. So I'm just going to download this now. And you'll see in my downloads folder here, we've got source to viewer So let's double click on that to open it. Windows protected your PC. Let's just run it anyway. And now we're inside source to viewer So let's do, let's open up our game file. So file open. And again, you're going to want to find where CSGO is installed, where CS2 is installed and open it, go into game, CSGO. And what we're looking for is these packs, which essentially contain assets from the games. So if we scroll down to the bottom, you'll see pack 01 underscore D. Now this is going to have essentially all we'll ever need from the CS2 game files. So we'll select that and click on open. And here you can see we've got all these folders that were inside that VPK file. And we're going to use this to get our characters, gun models and animations. So under characters, if we expand this models, you can see we've got our counter terrorist models, hostages and our terrorist models. For this tutorial, I'm going to export one of the terrorist models. So let's go with TM Phoenix. And then what you're going to want to do is click decompile and export. If you want to, for whatever reason, you can export as is. And essentially what that's going to do is export the files in their original format, but outside of the VPK. So you can see we've got these uh, VMDL underscore C files. And inside of Blender, using the add-on we used earlier, you can import these files. But when I tried that, there wasn't very good, there wasn't very good material support for the models. Uh, and it was better doing it directly through converting inside of Source 2 Viewer. So what we're going to do instead is go to decompile and export. Leave uh, the texture files as images, the materials as VMATs and the models change that to GLTF which is a model type that Blender can open uh, by default and then tap continue and choose where you want to save it so uh, I'm just going to make a folder here called uh, export and we'll chuck it in there and you can see that as exporting our models now it may take you know 30 seconds to a minute to extract them all and there you go you can see it says export completed so let's close that so now we've got our model and let's also grab our animations. So just like uh, with Valorant models, I don't know if you've watched any of my previous videos where I've talked about I've talked about using Valorant models inside of Blender. There are there are shared animations used by all of the character models. There are some specific CT animations and some specific T animations, but each independent version of the terrorist doesn't have its own animations. If that makes sense. Unlike in Valorant, where you know each agent may have their own individual animations. So to find these animations I'm going to look in the shared folder and you'll see anim sets so we've got counter terrorist animations terrorist animations and then all player animations so let's right click on anim sets do decompile and export change this to gltf continue and we'll put it in our export folder as well and select that folder and extract them and we'll come back for weapon models later so let's just close out of this go back into blender press a on our keyboard and delete to remove the default objects come up to file import gltf as that is the format that we chose to export our models in and then we're going to look inside of our export folder characters models phoenix is the model that we chose to export and then we've got our different variants here so i'm just going to go with variant a and tap import gltf 
And you'll see now inside of Blender, we have our character model. We enable the material view. You'll see our character is imported. I'd say the materials could do with a bit of work. If there's enough interest in it, I might make my own uh, shader node group for people to download and use to you know, make their character textures look a bit nicer than they do currently. As in the shading tab, you'll see here, uh, it's a pretty basic uh, node setup and I'm not sure how uh, you know, one-to-one -one this is with uh, CS2. I get it's still early days for these kind of tools for exporting models and that from CS2. So really the only thing I'm going to do is change this balaclava. You can see where it looks very reflective. Um, what I'm going to do is just select the balaclava texture and we're going to look for the roughness. So we'll just disconnect that and turn the roughness up to make it look a bit more like it should and make it not reflective. And that's pretty much all we're gonna do for the textures. You can also disable smoothing if you want to. Uh, I tend to just leave it on. And then of course, right click shade smooth if it was uh, you know flat shaded for any reason. And then one more thing I do like to do as well is you'll see the characters actually have uh, no eye texture. So they don't have an eyeball because I believe uh, in game, the eyeballs are their own separate not sort of entity with their own controllers and not actually part of the character model itself. So we're gonna need to add the eyeballs back. And the way that I found that's easiest to do that is far from ideal, but it works for the moment. And that is just to add the eyeball to the texture directly. So in the shading tab, let's click on this base color node here and you'll see this is inside of the balaclava texture. You'll see the, the base colors in the other texture slots look different. So you can see you've got the leg textures arm textures and then this one was the body but what we want is this balaclava texture as it has the eyeballs in it so you can see we are you see we have the balaclava texture selected so let's click this button here to unpack the item and use and select use file from current directory create where necessary and there you go you can see this little folder icon has changed we can then tap on that and grab this file path go to our file explorer paste that in and you can see if we search the name we've got the image right here <coughs> now we're going to open up your image editor of choice so i'm going to use photoshop there are plenty of other free options though, like GIMP or Paint.net or well, really anything. It's very simple what we're going to do, so you don't need to worry about having Photoshop. But if you would like it, I'll leave a link down in the description to where you can go and get it. And then all we're going to do is just drag and drop this into Photoshop to open up the texture. And then what you're going to want to do is head down to the description of this video where you'll find a link to download these eyeball textures. So these are the actual eyeball textures that they use in the game. But to make it easier for you than going through and digging through the game files to try and find them i'll just leave a link to them in the description now they're both slightly different you can see the eyeball color has a this has a darker ring around the outside uh, but for the sake of the video i'm just going to use this one so we'll just drag and drop both of those in tick yes yes and we're going to set this is essentially going to be our mask so the black area is going to be become invisible and the white area is going to be uh, visible applied to this bottom texture you'll see what i mean in a second so in photoshop i can show you how to do that so i'm going to right click on one of the, on one of the layers click rasterize and do that the same for the other one and then we're going to select this layer select the pixels in it press ctrl c and now we can hide this layer and inside of our brown eyeball we can click down here to add a new mask and then we can click down here to add a new mask and if we hold alt and click on the mask you'll see we're now inside of this mask which is this you know white section here and we can press ctrl v to paste in our mask from before and now if we leave our layer mask you'll see we just have the eyeball itself and now all we need to do is press Control T to, to bring up this transform up to bring up these transform options where we can then scale it and position it inside of our eyes just like so. So that's one. And if I hold Alt and drag, you can duplicate it and we'll add another one just like that. That's a very simple way to add the eyes back. It doesn't look the best, but for the moment, that's the best I got. And then you're going to come up to save a copy and we will just call it the exact same thing. So we'll remove copy from the end and press save. Yes. OK. Now we can close out a Photoshop. And back inside Blender, you'll see the texture hasn't updated, but if we open the folder and press open image, you'll see our eyeballs have been added. Now they get a bit squished, so they don't look the best up close, but from a distance, you can't really tell. If you want to be able to fly around in the viewport like this, then make sure you come up to edit preferences, uh, key map, search for fly, and you'll see view navigation, walk, fly. I set mine to shift F, so that's what it used to be back in Blender 2.7. And then if I press shift F, it puts a crosshair on my screen. I can move my mouse around to look around. I'd use WASD keys just like you would inside of CSGO to fly around. You can scroll up to make the zoom, uh, to make the flying faster and scroll down to make it slower. And I find this a uh, pretty intuitive way to navigate the viewport. Anyway, so back in the layout tab,
tab, you can see we have got our character textured and ready to go. He has some bones inside his body that you can't see. So what I like to do is select the bones over here in the bone date in the data tab on the viewport display tap in front. And you'll see now we can see the bones. If you want to disable them at any point in the top right corner, you can uncheck show overlays and you'll be able to see it without once we've added our animations and that. So to do animations, file, import, GLTF, just as before, but let's go back into our shared tab folder into animation sets and then here we've got our ctt and player animations there aren't many t or ct animations so for this you're welcome to open them and look at what they have but for this tutorial i'd like a bit of a larger selection so let's go and use the ui player ones and import just like that and as you can see this character model and uh, animations have been brought into blender now what i'm going to do is create a uh, a new collection and i'm going to call one and I'm going to call one of these collections um, model and the other one animation. And then we will put our Phoenix model into the model uh, collection along with uh, his, along with the meshes, just like that. And then we will put our animation ones inside of the animation collection. And that just means that we can hide one and show the other, you know, as and when we need to. So for the moment, we're just going to need the animations showing. And now all we're going to do is with the bones selected, head over to the animation tab or we can zoom in and have a look. And at the bottom here, you'll see we've got the dope sheet. Let's change this to the non-linear animation editor. And you'll see we've got all of these uh, animations here. So along the left side, it shows the names of the animations. If you scroll down, you can see the different lengths of all the animations as well as all their names. And you could just have a look through and pick which ones you want to use. There's a gap here for some reason. And then uh, there's even more down here. So let if we let's just have a look at some of these. So uh, T uh, loadout rifle walk up. If we put the star on that, that will select that animation, and we'll be able to watch the animation. And let's have a look at another one. Let's do uh, T wingman AK47. So let's enable that one instead, and look at what that one is. Again, if you want to hide the bones, you can just tap up here, and it gets rid of those. So I think we'll use uh, that animation. So to use it, let's click on it here, right click and choose start editing stashed animation. And then we can go back to the dope sheet and uncheck this box here that says only show selected. And you'll see we've now got all of the keyframes for our animation on all of the different bones along the left hand side here. So what we're going to want to do is copy this animation from this demo model here onto the character that we chose. So let's drag our playhead back to frame one, right click on the keyframes and press copy. Now if we go back to object mode, now let's just go back to the uh, non-linear animator and do stop editing stashed action. And I'll remove it from our dope sheet. So now when, once we hide our animation character and enable our, the model that we chose, and let's re-enable the overlays as well so we can see the bones. Let's click on our bones like this, go to the dope sheet of our T model, and you'll see there's actually some keyframes in here already. I'm not sure what these are, but I don't want them to mess anything up. So I'm just going to press delete on my keyboard to get rid of them and go to frame one. And now we're going to paste in the the keyframes from the other model, but it won't let us paste if we click paste like that, as it says there's no F curves to paste into. So what we need to do instead is add some keyframes to start with. So what we're going to do is come over to pose mode, press A on our keyboard to select all of the bones, and then we're going to press I with our cursor hovering over the viewport, press I and then press location, rotation and scale. And you'll see that will then add a keyframe for every single bone into our dope sheet down here, where we can now right click and paste all of the keyframes from our other model onto this model. So you'll see this animation is now applied to our character that we want it to be applied to. Now, the reason why I copy and paste the keyframes onto the model rather than using the nonlinear editor on this character is because this is much simpler as we can now directly edit the keyframes. So if you wanna, you know, prolong it over a longer period of time, you can scale the keyframes outwards or you could change the interpolation modes or you could remove keyframes from certain bones. So you want his fingers to do something else, you want him to walk forwards or whatever you can customize this now to your heart's content and it also then means we can get rid of the animation character as well rather than linking the animations and having to leave them we've got the animation on our character as you can see just like that and if we set the end of our animation to the last keyframe which is 157 so let's do that it should now loop 
just like that and yeah there we go that's our animation applied so let's get rid of our uh, let's get rid of the other animation placeholder character by right clicking and press delete hierarchy so let's come up to file clean up and then click unused data blocks and you'll see we've got 589 unused data blocks so let's get rid of that and let's also get rid of the recursive ones and then let's go file external data automatically pack resources and then file save as and let's just call this character animation just like that and save Okay, so now let's move on to gun model. So let's open up source viewer again and then file open. And we're going to look for that exact same pack file that we had before. So pack 01 dir open. And now on the left hand side, we'll see weapons. Let's open that models. And here is the folder for every single weapon model in the game. You can export whichever you like. In my case, I'm going to go for an AK 47. So let's select that folder. You can see inside we've got our models, uh, animation crafts and materials. So so on our AK-47, let's right click and do decompile and export. Again, you can do export as is if you want to then use the source IO add-on to import it, but we're just going to do it using this. So let's do decompile and export. And it's important when you're doing this, uh, I, if I were you, I would just export each gun as and when you need it because I tried exporting all of the weapon models in one go and it was going to take ages, so I cancelled it. Okay, so let's uh, keep our textures as images, our materials as materials, and let's change our models to G. GLTFs and our animation graph is going to stay as is and hit continue um we'll just put this in export and we'll make a folder called weapons and we'll put it in there and you can see it's going to extract the files again this may take a minute or two to uh, properly export okay so as you can see it says export completed so let's close out of source to viewer and go back into blender and once again we will press a and delete to remove the default objects file import GLTF again and we'll find where we saved those so I chose export and then inside weapons so we'll go to weapons models ak-47 and we have weapon riff ak-47 gltf so let's import that and if we zoom in let's do view frame selected you'll see our ak has been successfully imported along with uh some some bones for the you know for, for the first person hands i assume is what that's for but we're not going to worry about those uh in our case because we're using them on a third person model so we don't need those so i'm going to just hide those bones right off at the bat and now let's enable our material view and you'll see here is our ak-47 there's actually two models here you'll see we've got one and then here's the other one we're going to delete this one that looks sort of untextured so let's just press delete and get rid of that and we're left with this uh black ak so in the shading tab i will show you the reason why it is black so if we select our base model this is our base color texture so you can see it's pretty much transparent the entire way across and that's because we can then put our wood or metal or whatever texture it is underneath and uh, this is applied on top but what I find easier and what most people want to do is they won't want a default AK they'll want a nice skin so what I would recommend is heading to this website called karambit.gg essentially you can paste in an inspect link that you'll get from the steam marketplace so if I open up steam look on the community market cs2 and then let's look for AK 47 you'll see we've got all of these different skins here so there's a, a blood sport factory new let's scroll down and look at one of these guns so we'll grab the inspect in game link so we'll right click on that copy link address and we'll paste that into uh, karambit.gg you get this fun gun you can play around with in the meantime and there you go you can see that it has found our weapon so you can download the model directly uh, but it's untextured it's just an obj of an ak so basically what we've got already uh, except ours already has a shader set up so uh, it's easier just to use that so all we're interested in is the texture file so let's just download that and then in side of blender we will just drag and drop our texture into the shader tab and instead of our base color we will now just apply the the skin that we chose so let's pull this back down again so we can see our weapon and as you can see we've now got a uh, an ak-47 blood sport you'll notice the middle part is quite dark so what we can do is so what we can do is we can play with the specular value to try and make it match or or if we just remove if we remove the metallic and roughness values and play with them ourselves to try and make it look as close to the in-game skin uh, as we can then we can do that as well and that pretty much gives us our weapon skin it's not perfect but it's close enough again it's early days for uh source 2 model and texture extraction so that's pretty much as good as we're going to get at the minute and then back in the uh layout view you can see we've got our, our ak here so let's uh rename our collection to uh ak and we'll put the model inside of the collection there just like that and once again we're going to come up to file 
next uh clean up remove unused data blocks and remove the recursive ones as well and then external data automatically pack resources and save as and we'll call this uh AK and hit save as and back inside blender again let's go to our character animation where we're now going to want to file append look for our AK into collection our AK collection that we made and append it and you'll see it's now been added to our scene once again let's hide the bones of the AK we don't need those and with the AK selected we're going to want to put it into our character's hands so let's come over to constraints again with the AK selected add an object constraint add child of grab the eyedropper pick the bones of the character and in the bones we're going to type weapon and you'll see weapon hand underscore r so if you want the if you want your character to hold it in the right hand just like they do in game in third person anyway then you'll click that and if we hide the bones you can see that it is now connected to our left hand and if we go through the animation it's stuck to it's stuck to our right hand just like we want it to be although the rotation is off so let's fix that for that i'm going to re-enable the uh re-enable the overlays but i'm going to click on the bones and press h to hide those as it makes it a bit easier to see what we're trying to do so in my case it's going to be a very simple rotation i'm just going to press r on my keyboard to enable rotate as you can see and then i'm going to press the axis i want to rotate on so we can rotate on x we can rotate on y and we can rotate on z so none of those seem right and that's because those are our global rotation axes not our local ones meaning they're local to the gun so let's press z again to enable the local rotations and here you'll see we'll be able to rotate it into the hand so if i get a better view so we'll press r double tap z and rotate the gun so that it fits in the hand just like that and now if we watch our animation through gun is stuck in the hand just like we would want it to be so now we move on to the final step which is adding this to our map that we exported earlier so let's go up to file we'll just save this so it's saved in our character animation.blend file and once again we will create a new blender project delete the default items file append and we will look for our we will look for our map which we imported earlier so we'll go to nuke.blend and we'll go into collection and we'll see here is our nuke map collection so let's select that and hit append and once again this may take you know 30 seconds to a minute to actually import the map and there's quite a lot there if you're using a slightly older or not as powerful computer then what you can do is when you initially create the map is split it into segments so you could split different areas into it their own collections so you could just import the section that you need or just delete all the you know the parts that you're not using and i'd probably recommend doing that anyway just to increase render times for example if we're making an animation down here we don't need to have like 80 percent of the the rest of the models so let's just uh, collapse the this new map collection and uh, we'll enable our material view again just so that we can get a better idea of what we're looking at and there you go you can see we've got our materials enabled and now let's add our character so file append and we're going to go back to character animation which is the one that we have got our character with the animation applied and the weapon in and inside collection we will select them both and append now in the top right corner if we just select one of them so let's just go for the model and then we do view frame selected it will show us where our model is so currently he is in currently he is in this uh this control room i have absolutely no idea where this is on the map so if we select the bones of the character it's important not to select the bones of the weapon otherwise you'll just move the the weapon whereas the weapon is a child of our main character mesh uh, of our main character armature so if we move the main character's armature you'll see the weapon comes with it so let's select the main character's armature in the left toolbar you'll see we have the move tool so that will enable uh, this gizmo at the bottom so you can drag along these uh, axes if you if you prefer to do that and while we're at it i'm just going to select uh, the bones for the weapon and just hide those by pressing h on the keyboard because we don't need to worry about them as we're not using the bones on the weapon at all and then using these arrows or if you want uh just pressing g and then the corresponding axis uh we're gonna move it to where we want our animation to be so i think we'll do it sort of just outside garage somewhere like here and we'll move him down so that his feet are just in contact with the ground just like that let's see where does he move for the majority of the animation facing that direction okay so we'll move him to look sort of down the camera and move him backwards something sort of like that so if we set our end of our animation to be the same as what it was in the uh for the character if we watch our animation you see it's not running at real time 
um, because loading the entire map is quite intensive on your computer. Well, that is a rough idea of what our animation will look like. So let's swap to rendered view by clicking uh, in the top right corner and changing to viewport shading. Now, what we're looking at currently is uh, Eevee, which is the render engine uh, the default render engine inside of Blender. This is a uh, raster screen space render engine. It's not, it is not path traced unlike uh, cycles. So there's no global illumination. So what I recommend you do for these kind of animations is swap to cycles. So we're gonna do that and then change the device from CPU to GPU if you have a decent graphics card. I would probably not use cycles if you don't have a good graphics card. And if for whatever reason GPU is grayed out or it's not really doing anything, come up to edit preferences, system, and then under cycles render devices if you have a nvidia graphics card select optics so long as it's an rtx card if it's a gtx then you'll need to use cuda um, if it's an rtx then use optics and then if you have a amd graphics card then use hip i believe and one api is for intel graphics cards so make sure that is selected and you'll see now we are getting real-time lighting so if i move my 3d cursor here and then do shift a and add a uh, light and move it up you see we've got real-time lighting for our animation just like that now to save you the hassle of going around and adding your own lighting setup what i recommend you do is head over to this website called polyhaven slash hdris and grab any one of these so let's see we've got meadow 2 looks good let's download that we'll do 2k uh, hdr i suppose and download that and then all you have to do inside the shading tab of blender let's let's change it to world we'll zoom out of it so we can get a better view and then all we need to do is press shift a in the shader and type in environment texture and we'll drag that into the surface of the world output and then we can open up our hdri texture and now if we swap to rendered view you'll see our entire scene is lit by that hdri that we downloaded so let's go back to our main view and see what this looks like and as you can see we've got some some decent lighting now would be a good time to come up to file and save our project so let's just call this final and save that and we'll automatically pack resources and clean up any unused data blocks now this lighting is nice but i want to change the direction of it because currently he's in shadow so the way we can do that is if we go back to the shading view edit preferences add-ons and search for node wrangler you'll see node node wrangler then when you select your hdr you can press ctrl t on your keyboard and it's going to add this texture coordinate and mapping node and now with our character uh, in view let's switch to rendered mode and on our mapping node in the rotation we can change our x y and z rotation so what that does if i zoom out so you can see if I change this rotation, you see how it rotates the background. So that's our X, We've got our Y, but I think I'm going to do our Z, which should essentially just change the direction that the sun's coming from. So where is the sun in this clip? The sun is up there. So we're going to want it to come from sort of over there somewhere. So let's rotate it around something like that and zoom in and have a look at our character. As you can see, the lighting is now directly at, uh, pointing towards him. Let's just continue moving our lighting around to get something that we're happy with. And I think that's pretty good. So let's go back to our main layout and add the final thing we need for our animation. And that is a camera. So let's press shift A and choose camera. And then if we press this button on the right hand side over here or numpad zero, it moves us into our camera view. And earlier, if you select, if you set the walk fly option, press shift F and you'll now be able to move the camera around just like you would if you were flying about, just, just like you would if you're playing a video game with WASD and moving your mouse around. And now we can just position our camera wherever we want. So something like that. And then this will be the perspective that our animation is rendered from. If you want to animate the camera, so for example, so for example, let's move it over here and point it towards our character, something like this. Let's go to frame one, press I on our keyboard and do uh, location and rotation for our camera. And let's move to the end of our animation and we'll move it sort of over here, something like that. And then press I location rotation again. You'll see between these two keyframes, the camera is gonna move. And you can do map cinematics and things like that if you don't have a character, but in my case, I do. So yeah, that is essentially the basics to making an animation inside of Blender. All you're going to want to do now is render it. So over in the output tab, set your resolution, and then you're probably going to want to export as an image format. So uh, PNG. So we'll just stick it in here and then come up to render, render animation. And it's going to render out every single frame of your animation. And then in your editing software, you can put all the images together into a video. And that's your CS animation. So I'm going to just render this one frame, 
by pressing F12 just to see what it looks like. As you can see, there is our there is a frame of our animation. My samples are set pretty high. You can reduce those, make sure you have some denoising. I have covered uh, render settings in Blender extensively in my previous videos. But yeah, that is essentially the basics to getting maps, models, animations into Blender and creating an animation with them. If you guys did find this video helpful, make sure you drop a like on it as well as leave any comments with any future video ideas that you would like to see on the channel. Check out Licked with the link at the top of the video description. Thank you to all my supporters on Patreon. Again, there's a link for my Patreon in the description as well. Shout out to Redeye for making the Source IO add-on available as well as the Source 2 viewer team. And other than that, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.